Please join me in the Christian greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please stand for the call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Our hymn of praise is in my heart, there rings a melody. prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Astonishing God, you gave us a vision of the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, your home among mortals on earth. All people and nations will stream to your city, where they will find nourishment, healing, and peace. Even now, your blessings shine upon all the earth to help us see a larger vision of your loving care for all creation. And so you call us to move beyond our comfortable circles and into the unfamiliar places as we seek to dream your dream of a world made new in Christ. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled, but confess your sins and God will give us peace. Loving God, we confess that we are an anxious people who deny your blessings and fail to keep your word. Let us conclude our prayer of confession together. Forgive us, we pray, for these and all our sins, that we might live in peace and reflect your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. 
Let your hearts be still. For God, For God, loves, God you. loves you and forgives all your wrongdoings. Beloved, receive the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. for illumination in your bulletin. Living God, you sent your apostle to preach the gospel to women gathered by a river in a secluded place of prayer. There was a businesswoman named Lydia, who was led by the Spirit to hear your word as truth. You opened her heart in love, and she opened her home to the spreading of the gospel. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Cling wide the doors of our hearts this day as we hear your word of life, that we too may open our lives to serve your word and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the Old Testament, Psalm 67. We will be reading responsibly. I'll read the odd verses and you will read the even verses. Let us read the word of the Lord. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. May the peoples praise you. God, may all the peoples praise you. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the New Testament, the book of Acts. We will be reading from chapter 16, verses 9 through 15 together. Let us read God's word together. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samaria, and the next day we went to the island. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Our Gospel reading is from John 14. I will be reading verses 23 through 29. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to be with the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, there are a lot of ways to remember things. One method I keep hearing over and over again is to tie a string around your finger. Well, when I've tried that, I forgot why I tied the string around my finger. So it didn't work for me. Some people make up sentences where the first letter of each word means something. And I remember this from when I took piano lessons. Every good boy does fine. Helps the beginning piano students remember the notes on the lines of the troubled class. <coughs> Some speakers, when they want to remember their speeches without the assistance of notes, make a movie up in their head. They visualize all these little individual things. I tried that once and I couldn't remember a thing. I didn't even see the pictures. So I use a script. In today's passage, Jesus tells his disciples that they are going to discover a special way to remember what he taught them. The Father is going to send the Holy Spirit, the counselor, not only to teach them new things, but to remind them of everything Jesus has taught them. One thing Jesus wants them to remember was how to experience his peace, even in dire circumstances. Jesus made a distinction between the peace that he gives and that which the world offers. You might be surprised to hear that when C.S. Lewis, the great Christian writer, made a firm decision as a young man to become an atheist, he had an overwhelming feeling of well-being and peace. This came from the belief that he was not going to be held ultimately accountable for his actions, some of which he was not proud of. This is one type of peace that the world gives. But just because we have a feeling of serenity does not mean it is going to last. There are many experiences in life that engender a temporary tranquility, but it becomes increasingly difficult to maintain that feeling as the reality of life continues to break down its facade. In a 2005 movie, The Lord of War, provides an example of another flavor of our world's peace. The main character, Gurley Orloff, was initially a caring family man, but he became an international gun runner, and over time, he lost his conscience. His ability to care about the differences between right and wrong blurred more with each illegal transaction. There's a Native American parable that says that the conscience is a three-sided stone with very sharp edges and that it resides within the heart. Every time a man violates his conscience, the stone spins, causing the man pain. But over time, if he keeps in ignoring the pangs of conscience, the stone begins to dull. Eventually, he's not able to even feel the stone when it spins. And so, a man without conscience is always at peace. In the Lord of War, Olaf got to a point where he was willing to sell his powerful weapons to the highest bidder, even to the opposing sides. Eventually, Orloff's brother was killed in a botched deal, and his family disowned him. Yet Olaf kept on plying his immoral trade. During one of his darker, more brooding moments, Olaf said this to an FBI agent who was trying to catch him in an illegal act. They said, evil prevails when good men fail to act. 
what they ought to say is evil prevails. Olaf had a type of imploded faith. He put his confidence in worldly power and the temporal security it promised. This distorted sense of peace came from the belief that his clients would never kill him because their need for weapons was endless. So as long as he was giving them the best deal, in his mind he was safe. Of course, this type of peace is wholly dependent on distorted views of reality. In contrast, the peace that Jesus gives us is different. It is no mere warm feeling in the heart or empty sense of safety or freedom from accountability. The peace Jesus offers is a lasting undercurrent in our lives that can sustain us through the turbulent storms of life. The peace that Jesus gives us has been forged on the anvil of God's truth. And so it's going to remain and bear fruit in our lives, no matter what. Not surprisingly, C.S. Lewis's conversion from atheism to theism was also a profoundly emotional experience. But this conversion brought the peace of Christ in. One of his biographers notes that before his conversion, Lewis was exceptionally anxious about death and dying. After his conversion, however, he evidenced a great calmness about his coming death and even some anticipation. Reports of his last day confirms his calmness and inner peace. The peace that Jesus gives is not always experienced as an unwavering, emotionally blissful state. Throughout the scriptures, we see that many biblical characters experience a roller coaster of emotions, even as they were striving to accomplish God's will. We need look no further than the Psalms to know that this is true. But then the peace of Jesus gives is not an emotion. Jesus does not call us to happiness, to unwavering gaiety, or any other particular feeling. He is calling us to peace, a fundamental sense of well-being that undergirds us regardless of how we are feeling at any given time. Jesus' peace is the unrelenting presence of godly hope no matter what our emotions may be at the time. In our reading today, we see that when Jesus bestowed his peace, he gave two specific commands. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. Over the last month, I've been going through some difficult times, and I was very upset all the time, and it was really wearing on me. And finally, I just turned it over to God. I just said, I can't solve it. The only person who can is God. Mm -hmm. And it's like a big weight was lifted off me. So it, it, I've done that before, but I didn't this time for some reason. And after I gave it to God, I had a peace that I haven't experienced in quite a while. And it's a tall order to do that not to let your heart be troubled, and not to be afraid. Have you ever had some well-meaning friends tell you not to worry so much? In doing so, that friend added an unhealthy dose of guilt to your already anxious spirit. Perhaps you wanted to grab that person by the shoulders and say, you have no idea what could happen. There are a lot of things in this world be troubled about. Bad things happen that are beyond our control. Because of this, fear is an hourly experience for some of us. How does Jesus and some of our best friends expect us to just turn this off? Actually, Jesus doesn't. His peace is not something that we muster up, but a blessing, Jesus. 
counselors tell us that there are only five basic emotions. Sad, glad, mad, scad, and shamed. Of course, these five have many cousins, as you can combine two or three of them, like a certain brand of jelly beans, to come up with other legitimate emotions. For example, when glad and scad come together, you get anticipation or sadness over a significant loss sometimes joins with being mad at the person or circumstance that created the loss and the result is grief. Anxiety is just another name for plain old fear, no combination needed. In order to diminish the tri tri trepidation, trepidation we experience over the more negative emotions like anger, sadness, fear, shame. These same counselors sometimes talk about the importance of identifying our feelings and their source. For example, you can say, I'm angry about Joe getting lazy Joe getting credit for my work. Or I'm sad that my best friend is moving away. Or I feel ashamed that I told that racial joke. Our feelings, even the more negative ones, have no moral value all by themselves. They just are. Of course, feelings can get out of hand and thus become something that is unhealthy for us, even sinful. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul quoted something about a feeling from one of the Psalms. In your anger, do not sin. The same can be true of all of our emotions. In your sadness, do not sin. In your fear, do not sin. In your shame, do not sin. And in your gladness, do not sin. As we seek to separate sin from our emotions, we are more likely to be able to sense the underlying peace of Christ. As we sense the peace Jesus gives, the power of our emotions can diminish until even we who are afraid can let go of that fear and dwell in the peace of Christ. Jesus said God would send the Holy Spirit, and God has done that. And on Pentecost Sunday, the first Sunday in June, we will celebrate that by wearing red. As we listen with our spiritual ears, we can hear the Holy Spirit, Spirit's guidance and counsel and the reminder of what Jesus taught so that we can live in the peace Jesus gives, no matter how we're feeling otherwise. Jesus promises us peace, not as the world gives, but that which is based on a power that overcomes anything that the world could possibly throw at us. Let us open ourselves to God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and ask Jesus to fill us with peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn of response is peace, perfect peace. Let us stand and lift up our voices.
join me in the Apostles' Creed as we affirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. During our prayers of the people, when I say, Lord, send out your spirit, please respond with and renew the faith of the earth. Let us pray. In this season of the spirit, let us offer our prayers and thanksgivings for the world, saying, Lord, send out your spirit. And renew your faith of the earth. All creation lives to praise God. As the earth yields its blessing, may we honor and protect the precious gifts of nature and give thanks for the beauty, healing, and sustenance it provides for all. Lord, send out your spirit. And renew the face of the earth. You blessed your church throughout the ages with leaders like Paul and Lydia to share in the spreading of the gospel. Give you to your church this day a profound sense of the mission in which you now call us for the life and health of the world. Lord, send out your spirit. And renew the face of the earth. You judge the people with equity and guide the nations of the earth. Give to all leaders and people the gift of wisdom and the spirit of peace that we may walk by your light as we serve the common good. Lord, send out your spirit. And renew the face of the earth. You promise to be with us always through the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Give to all who suffer from violence or from natural disasters, from grief or pain, an enduring, or, or an enduring trust that joy, Jesus, that joy will raise again. We pray especially for those we now name, Ashley's friend Paul, Tammy, Cindy, Norma Lou, Jean, Margaret, Chris, Zoe, Eric, Melissa, Mary, Garrett and Kelly, Sharon, Margaret, Phil, Allen, Mary, Phil Reed's daughter, Paula, Lou's daughter, Michelle, Sarah's friend, Alex, Ryan's grandmother, Claire's husband, Carl, Lou's friends, Debbie and Teddy, Gail's aunt, Jean, Carter, Tim's friend, Jack, Gail, Jill, Bruce and his wife, Sally, Vila's friends, Mrs. Campbell, James and Keith, as well as all of those who have lost loved ones. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. We give thanks for the many blessings of our lives, that as we follow Jesus, he journeys with us day by day through the presence of your Holy Spirit, our advocate and teacher. Lord, send out your spirit. And renew the face of the earth. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Be with all who are born this day and all that will, who will die, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And may we all come to share in your heavenly city with voices of unending praise. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
that it's increased, and God has richly blessed us. Therefore, bring your tithes and offerings and come into God's court with praises. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. 